O1 research agent is designed to perform search using perplexity and write comprehensive reports on given questions, such as projected GPU count in the largest NVIDIA supercluster by the end of 2025. It produces markdown style reports. It also saves its uh, search results in every iteration. It's a fully autonomous agent, so it can decide to end its own research. Here is another report on when AGI will be achieved, uh, quite detailed uh, since it is all one. Uh, and we will be taking a look at a few different files and also the dot cursor rules file in which, which we use to build this. I actually built this during a live stream and the live stream of building this is currently available at my Patreon, both the code files for this and the uh, live building of this uh, agent system is will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. The beautiful part of this is that uh, even though O1 is not capable of uh, function calling or structured outputs or JSON mode, we can actually instruct it in a way to actually return uh, actions, which we search terms and actions and so on and so forth which we can then uh, parse through and actually uh, run those functions whenever necessary. And to achieve this, we are going to look at a detailed uh, dot cursor rules file uh, during the live stream. Instead of building it iteratively, I tried to improve the uh, dot cursor rules file, file and try to one-shot it with uh, Composer. So it was an interesting exercise. I'll try to share what I've learned about it. So uh, let's begin by running this. I think there's, a, uh, there's different variations of it, even another, even a one that was written by uh, the early Opus, not the 3.5 Opus. Of course, we're still waiting for it, but this uh, second one works well. Let's run this. And so we can see uh, it's it in action before um, taking a look at the code. Okay, let's start the process with NVIDIA stock price at the end of 2025. This is not financial advice and you shouldn't take it as such, but uh, this is for uh, information purposes to build uh, uh, agent-like systems. As we can see, the agent uh, started iteration one uh, and returned some uh, search terms. Uh, actually, the fir at first, it didn't return search terms and in the second iteration, it returned search terms. So this is not uh, very exact, as you can see, because uh, since it's not a function calling agent, its instructions matter quite a lot. But let's see what it does in uh, iteration three. It can actually decide to do more searches or write a report and decide to write a report. And now uh, I believe we are waiting for the report to be written. And here it is. It's actually written it in the .txt format. This was the first basic one that we have ran, and here is all the uh, the report. If we, actually, it returns it in markdown format, so if we were to rename this as MD, then we can actually uh, be able to see this in markdown. Here we go, there's a comprehensive report on this uh, issue that we have asked. Okay, so the important part here is, so these are pretty experimental. Uh, to review the code, let's go ahead and review the, one of the uh, files. Like I said, you can have access to all of them from Patreon, and then we'll also review the cursor rules file to see how we have built it. So for this, we are using OpenAI, async OpenAI, and we are going to initialize an agent client with OpenAI and perplexity client with the base URL pointing to perplexity. Uh, we are defining a function. The environment variables are automatically detected or open, regular OpenAI, you can input it here as such if you need to. But if you have it in your environment variables, they'll be automatically detected anyway. We're defining an async function here, agent response, which is going to take in a list of messages. This is going to make a call to a one mini and just return the response. So we will be crafting the messages later. And we have a function to do perform web search. Uh, and its instruction is perform in-depth web searches and return detailed results. So every part of this file was written by uh, Composer based on the dot .cursor rules file. Uh, and if you'd like to watch how it was built, you can also find it in the link below. And so this is, we are using the Llama 3.5 Sonar Large to perform 
web search with the, based on the query that was going to be generated and return the response. We have a function to parse agent response. So the agent can return uh, its actions in between uh, certain XML tags. So we find those tags and we strip them and try to actually parse it out of the agent's response. So this is going to actually return the search terms and any actions if available. And with the perform searches function, it's going to take in a list of search terms and create tasks based on those terms. And, uh, and actually with the web search function, and we will execute them with async gather in parallel. Say the JSON file is going to try to save uh, each part of the iteration's data into a JSON object such as this when they are properly available. And uh, write report is going to create uh, a report in research report.txt based on what the uh, agent has returned. And the research loop uh, is going to take in the research initial question. Here is the uh, instructions to the agent itself. This was also written by composer based on the dot cursor rules file, which we'll go over right after this. It says you're an autonomous research agent. Your task is to research the following question. We pass in the question, provide search terms within search terms tags and actions within action tags. Continue researching until you have enough information to write a comprehensive report. When you're ready to write a report, use the action write report tag. So this was its instructions entirely written by composer. But if you take a look at the next one, uh, just to see how it's uh, being written, you are an autonomous research agent, pretty much the same thing, but the guidelines here are provide search terms within search terms tags, specify actions, wait for search results before taking the next action, continue researching until you have enough information. When ready, include write report in your actions to end the research phase. So these are all written by composer. So we are instructing an AI to instruct another AI. It's an interesting process. And we, we in the live coding session, we opted to not go iteratively, but just to update the dot cursor rules file just as an exercise. Anyway, so these are its instructions and the messages list is created here. We initialize iteration to one. We print informative statements. We await agent's response based on the messages, which we will take, uh, the, the, which we will formulate once we take the initial question. And then we, once we have the response, we're going to parse the response. We're going to save it to JSON. If right report is in the parsed actions, parsed responses actions, then we're going to print agents ready to write a file report. Uh, and then we make another call, actually. This is how Composer decided to do this. Please write a comprehensive report based on your research. This is not how I would have envisioned it, actually. Uh, so it's fun, actually, to see how Composer uh, thinks about how to put together something like this based on the dot .cursor rules file. And then we write the report, we print it. Otherwise, uh, we perform searches, uh, and we... Uh, append the assistance response plus the search results back into the messages. We increment the iteration counter, taking a user question and start the research loop, which we have just looked at. And we just run everything with asyncio.run. So like I said, this was, uh, we didn't modify anything about either, either one of these files. Uh, and we just allowed AI to craft it. And it did, for the most part, a decent job. So these are experimental, like I said. Let's take a look at how we crafted uh, generate or created the uh, uh, dot cursor rules file, which is the interesting part. Okay, so first we are given an example to call OVA Mini, example of exact API call we'll be using for the agent itself. So I've grabbed these from OpenAI documentation, but it uses regular OpenAI. I actually switched it to, to use async OpenAI. Here, that's how we are importing it. And I changed all one preview to all one mini, and I put in a, a comment here saying that use this model. And then, of, uh, and then of course, the role has, has to be user because all one doesn't actually accept a system role for, in its messages. So I, I added another comment here saying this model doesn't support system messages, only use user message, both for system and user. And I just left the example from the docs exactly as it is for the rest of the way. So adding these quite uh, simple tags uh, or comments into the dot .cursor rules file actually was very helpful. It never made a mistake as far as these are concerned. This model also returns account for reasoning tokens. Always print these as follows. And I gave it 
how to print the reasoning tokens. I know we didn't see it in the basic one example, but uh, I believe the basic two example prints that because I was updating this .cursor rules file as we as I was building it. And then here we are giving it a sample perplexity call. Again, we are importing the async open AI. I again copied this from perplexity's documentation. In the documentation, it was inserting the API key as a, a string, but I changed it to get it from environment variables. And here I added a comment saying, always print the web search query for the user for user and debugging purposes, because we just like to see uh, how the searches are processed. I was trying to see if the search terms are being parsed correctly. Other than that, uh, we have, this is the custom uh, system message. Sorry, this is the uh, system message that is default on the documentation, but I added a comment saying, change this instruction to perform in-depth web searches and return detailed results. And it does that, so it never made a mistake here as well. As you can see, this is the system message it has actually written. The composer has done that because we put this uh, comment here. So the rest of it is actually exactly as it is. Uh, and the rest of it is pretty much, uh, I've removed the streaming part of it. And then it says, we will be building a research AI agent which can take actions using perplexity function to search the web and write file function to write a report about its findings. We need to instruct the agent in meticulous details so it can return search terms and actions within XML tags. I just gave that empty like that. Uh, so we can parse and use them programmatically, make sure search terms are appropriately converted to a list. By the way, the cursor rules file is available at my Patreon in the download as well. Uh, so we, I had to add this to that, make sure the search terms are appropriately converted to a list, pay special attention to parsing each search properly, uh, instruct the model on the structure, which it should return the search term so we can parse uh, them properly. So I modified this several times while building it because uh, at the end of the day, we need to instruct the model in how it should return the search terms. For example, in this instructions, it just says provide search terms within these tags, but how is it going to provide? It's just comma separated, and it's not exactly defined here. And because that definition actually is going to allow us to parse it, right? Parse the agent response. So that's why I kept adding to it to hopefully uh, allow the composer to write that part better. And for the most part, it did, but it wasn't perfect. Web searches should be per performed in parallel using async IO. So it actually got this perfectly well. Since not all actions can be taken at the same time, as the agent needs to wait for the search to complete, we need to instruct the agent to wait for the search to complete before taking the next action. Agents needs to be autonomous as possible within a loop, continuing the research until it is satisfied with the results and should be able to end the loop when it has enough information to write a report. The agent response or report, can, yeah, okay. So my idea was that, so we are writing all these instructions for Composer and the Composer has to figure out how to instruct the agent itself plus the lo logic flow of the app. Uh, that's why I kept adding to it and it succeeded for the most part. Now the thing is that it was, the agent was returning its reports most, almost always in markdown format, but at first we were saving it to .txt file. So I later uh, instructed it to return as markdown, but when you, when you instructed the return as markdown, when it was instructed to do that, it would sometimes return the like write report and then write the report sometimes with or sometimes without these triple backtick markdown tags. So I had to instruct, put this additional instruction to say that if the agent response for report contains these tags, Extract the report from between these tags and write it to markdown file only when these tags are found. When I only wrote this, then it, the logic flow, the programmatic part of the script was written in such a way to always look for these. That's why I added the next step. These tags may not be present. If not present, write the entire response for the report to the markdown file. Because if these tags are not present, we can immediately write it. So there's a lot of little uh, things that pop out, which might be easier to deal with, actually, uh, if you're doing iteratively in the chat loop of the composer. Anyway, but this was a test anyway. Reading and writing files should always implement encoding UTF-8. This was due to error that was encountered. 
Obviously, sometimes perplexity returns uh, some search results that contain characters that cannot be written without the encoding as being set to UTF-8. All files should be saved under research folder. Create this folder if it doesn't exist. This was for later iterations. That's why we have a research folder here. But the first iteration doesn't use that. Uh, the report should be written in markdown format in a markdown file. Inform the model of this specification. Okay. Instead of printing agent responses and search results in terminal, please save them to appropriately formatted JSON files for each iteration. The reason for this was because if we print both the responses and search results, it was difficult to keep track of what was going on in the um, command line. So this we added this. Let's have a special function to handle the agent response and parse the search terms and actions. Uh, we added this so that there would be a special function to parse the response so we can actually see what's going on easier in, a, in essence because it's more modular rather than having it uh, being taken care of in the while loop, which gets cluttered and difficult to keep track of. So yeah, uh, and add informative print statements every step of the way to debug and to see what the agent's doing and thinking. This will work for the most part, but it wasn't always printing the search terms. That's why. I added this always print the web search query for the user and debugging up there as well. And I and it wasn't always taking user input. So we added this. Uh, we should take in user input for a specific uh, search research question. Uh, and after that, it, it was following it just fine. Please use term color to print different parts of the agent processes in different colors. Always provide detailed instructions to model, considering everything carefully. This is so that sometimes because the instructions were very simplistic, uh, after adding that, it was actually creating more detailed instructions for the agent itself. And then there was a few other additions to this, and then the model's performance start, or I should say, composer's performance started to degrade using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Now, this uh, cursor rules file is not, is not super well organized. Uh, also, do keep in mind, we learned that uh, if you keep adding instructions, you know, at some point, some of those instructions starts getting forgotten or get lost in the middle. Uh, so this was about perfect. So, so with these instructions, it was able to create an agent one, with one shot from Composer almost every time. Although, you know, probably one shotting it is not the best approach, of course, but we tried it anyway. So after adding a few more instructions, uh, deleted it. Now, another interesting thing would be actually to get maybe cursor to rewrite these, rewrite um, these instructions better organized. Um, now, so this would be something interesting to do. Uh, well, control K didn't work well, well, but this is something to consider, right? Uh, so you can just input your instructions and then allow cursor or chat GPT, what have you, to uh, rewrite it. So yeah, this is about it. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, all the source code plus how to live stream of how to build it is available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. If you are enjoying my videos, you can find more at my website at kawaii.live. Uh, there's about over 300 free videos. Each one of them is an interesting project. I like to experiment and build. Uh, you can watch the free videos. These are the YouTube videos that are linked. And if you're a patron, you can download the source code to each and every one of them. Uh, just find the uh, interesting project that you're looking for, such as Memory Layer for LLM apps, and click. It'll take you to the Patreon post. And if you're not a patron, it'll prompt you to sign up. And now you can download the code files there. Now, uh, I also have my 1000x Masterclass, which is 23 chapters over 13 hours of coding with cursor. Check that out as well. And uh, if you would like to speak with me one on one, I have consulting tiers at my Patreon if you need help with your projects or just want to talk to me, uh, consider those as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.